It's been a while since I made one of my most popular videos, how to use clean flight pass through to flash your BL Heli ESCs without using a programmer or a tool stick. With this method, the clean flight flight control board is the programmer or the tool stick or whatever. And the long and short of it is that you can program or flash your BL Heli ESCs without disconnecting them from your flight controller at all. You just plug your flight controller into the USB just like you were gonna flash your flight controller and instead you can access the ESCs. So I'm gonna do an updated version of this video because a lot has changed since then. I made that video way back when this feature had first come out. There were a whole lot of caveats and this won't work and that won't work. A lot of that has changed. It's a lot simpler now than it used to be. Let's get into it. Now the first thing I wanna show you is if I go ahead and I plug in my flight controller and I connect in my clean flight GUI and then I try and go over to BL Heli Suite and use BL Heli Suite, it will not work. And the reason is that only one device at a time can use your COM port. So if clean flight is using the COM port, BL Heli Suite can't talk to the flight controller. That's not gonna work. And so all you need to do here is disconnect and then everything will be fine. Do not have your clean flight GUI up and running uh, and connected or the BL Heli pass through will not work. Okay, now you can tell because you heard that sound, I've got my flight controller plugged in. See, it's plugged in, I can connect to it. But instead of using the clean flight GUI, I'm gonna go over to BL Heli Suite. And I'm gonna use BL Heli Suite to connect to the flight controller. Before I do that, I need to select the correct interface. And if you're using the pass-through method that we're describing here, there are only two interfaces you're gonna choose. You're either gonna choose interface E, which is the B Scilab's BL Heli bootloader, clean flight, or interface six, which is Atmel BL Heli Simon K bootloader, clean flight. And you'll choose that depending on which bootloader your ESC has. Most Scilab's ESCs are gonna have the BL Heli bootloader. Some of them will sometimes ship with the Simon K bootloader though. But it's very easy. Try the BL Heli bootloader first. If it doesn't work, Try the Simon K bootloader. If neither of those work, then your ESC may not have a bootloader. That is very uncommon in this day and age. Uh, the clean flight pass through is a, a must have feature in, in many respects. And I can't imagine a vendor shipping an ESC without a bootloader on it in this day and age. The only one I can think of is the X Rotor, uh, Hobby Wing X Rotor 20 amp. I believe that doesn't even ship with BL Heli on it, it ships with some custom firmware from from Hobbywing uh, and that's the only example I can think of of an ESC shipping without a bootloader already on it. It doesn't even ship with BL Heli on it though so what are you going to do? So I'm going to go ahead and select interface E which is the Scilabs BL Heli bootloader clean flight interface and then I'm going to choose my COM port which is the COM port associated with the Scilab CP210 the USB to UART bridge, that's basically my, my clean flight flight control board. Baud rate, 115.2, that's the default. And I'm gonna hit connect. Now at this point, nothing will work because the ESCs are not powered up. And I'm gonna go ahead and power up the ESCs. I'm using a smoke stopper bulb and you should have your props off as well. Very important to do both of those things. Now you'll notice that the ESC's powered up, but and, but they normally go do do doot, do doot, right? But they just went do do doot. And the reason they didn't do the second part of the chime is because they're not getting a throttle signal because they're in programming mode. They're, they're being talked to by the programmer, not by the flight controller. Okay, so that's your signal that your ESC's are hearing the programmer. Then I'm gonna hit check. And when I hit check, I get a quick list of what firmware is on my ESCs and what firmware version. And then the ESCs are labeled master for number one and slave, slave, slave. I may also get the warning that setup is not in sync with master. We'll talk about that in one second. If at any point in this process, what I'm describing doesn't work. So for example, you hit connect and it doesn't connect successfully, or you hit check and instead of seeing the list of ESCs that I showed you, you get maybe a bunch of a blank dialog box or a bunch of dashed lines. It could mean one of several things. Number one, 
you could have something else holding the COM port like the clean flight GUI and you'll get a dialog box warning you that that's happening so that should be pretty unambiguous you could have the wrong bootloader type selected and actually VLHeli Suite is pretty smart if you've got the wrong bootloader type selected a lot of times it'll actually just warn you and say whoops I see the wrong bootloader you should switch over most likely if this doesn't work you have an incompatible version of clean flight or beta flight and the short version is that you need clean flight 1.13 or beta flight 2.70, maybe 2.71, I think 2.70 or greater to be sure that this will work with just about any flight controller and just about anything, it will work. If you have an earlier version of clean flight 1.12 or earlier, this isn't going to work. I don't, I don't believe that it supported this feature at all until 1.13. And if you have an earlier version of beta flight, it might work, but it might not depending on whether your board uses a virtual COM port or whether it uses a CP210 chip. Before Betaflight 2.7, the virtual COM port did not support pass-through, okay? Also, BLHeli 14.4, I believe, was the, the, the latest, the earliest one that supported BLHeli pass-through over the virtual COM port. If all of that is gibberish to you, know this. You need to be using BLHeli 14.4 or greater, and you need to be using beta flight 2.7 or greater or clean flight 1.13 or greater. And you really should be using those things anyway, right? If you're a holdout on an older version of beta flight, get with the times. Alrighty, so let's do that again. I'm going to plug in my ESCs. I'm going to hit check and let's see what I get. Now notice I, I said we got this not in sync with master. What is that all about? Well, let's talk about what that means. Anytime the slave ESCs don't have the exact same configuration as the master ESC, you'll get the warning not in sync with master. But this is not always a problem. Let's go look at this tab, and this is a new tab that wasn't here when I made my earlier video, the ESC overview tab, and let's figure out how these ESCs are not in sync. Let's see, they've got the same version. If we go down the list, anything that is not the same is called out in blue, it's highlighted. So notice that most of these ESCs have a PPM min of 1020, but this ESC has a PPM min of 1024, and the top is also different, 1988, 96, 92, and 92. The reason these are different is because I did a stick calibration. And because the timing circuitry on the ESCs is slightly different, the ESCs didn't read the exact same timing value, and therefore they don't, they don't have the same endpoints. And that's sort of the whole point of calibration, is to take into account slight discrepancies in the timing circuitry of the ESCs. So the fact that these values are not identical is not a problem. In fact, it's potentially fixing a problem, which is the slight discrepancy in the timing circuits. So that's fine. The fact that these ESCs are not in sync, in this case, is completely fine. Another time you might see the ESCs not in sync is if you've reversed the motor direction on some of the ESCs. Sometimes you wire the ESCs up and when you go to spin the motors, you find out that some of the motors aren't spinning the right direction. Instead of resoldering the motors and flipping the wires to change their direction, you can go into software and switch the direction. And if you've done that, some of these ESCs will show up as normal and some will show up as reversed. And again, that could be completely normal and correct for your setup. And it, they would still say uh, out of sync. Now what you can do about that out of sync is in the options, you can choose whether to sync the motor direction and whether to sync the min, center, and max throttle to the ESCs. Now in this case, I know that my motors are supposed to all have the same motor direction. I have taken care of the motor direction by wiring them to the ESCs in such a way that they spin the correct direction. So I'm gonna choose to sync the motor direction to multiple ESCs because I know that the ESCs should all have the same motor direction normal but I'm gonna choose not to sync the min, center, and max throttle because I know that these ESCs should not have the same min and max value because I've done a calibration and I know they're not supposed to be that way. And when I do that, I should no longer get the warning about them being out of sync. And that's how you fix that. If any of these other options were different though, that could be a problem. For example, if one of the ESCs had damped light off and the other three had it on, that would be a problem. The out of sync warning would be, would be meaningful and you would wanna fix that. 
I'm not going to go through all these options because I have a video where I talk about all these options and I'm going to link to it in the upper right with a card right now. So you can go watch that video if you want to learn about all these options. But I will take you through the basic step of changing the settings and flashing the firmware. Now, if you want to change any of these settings, all you got to do is switch it and hit right setup. And there you go. One, two, three, four, right, okay, it's done. And again, if I go to the ESC overview, notice that now it shows as reversed. Let's just put that back the way it was before I go to fly again. <laughs> okay, if you wanna change just some of the ESCs, what you can do is you can left click to take an ESC out of the group, or you can right click to select just one ESC. So again, I'm going to left click here. Now I've got all four. I can right click to select just ESC number two. So let's say, for example, I want to switch ESCs two and three to reversed and have one and two be normal. I'm going to left click to select two and three. And then I'm going to change the setting to reversed and do right setup. And now we can see that one is normal and four is normal but three and two are reversed. So that's how you can change the settings on just some of the ESCs if that's what you wanna do. If you wanna update the firmware, you just hit flash BL Heli. You choose the firmware version that you wanna flash, whether it's the latest version or some earlier version, it's up to you. You're always gonna to wanna to flash multi for multi-rotor. Main and tail are intended for ESCs on a collective pitch helicopter, which most of my viewers, <laughs> I dare say, are not using. So you're gonna flash the multi firmware, and then you're gonna choose the firmware type, and this is critical that you get this right. You would always wanna look at what the current firmware is and flash that same firmware. If you flash a different firmware, you can smoke your ESC and your motor. I'm not kidding about that, okay? So only flash the same firmware. There are some cases where firmwares are cross compatible between different ESCs. And if you know that you've got one of those cases, then you can fly, you can go, go your own way on that. But in general, everybody should be only flashing the same firmware that is already on the ESC for safety. So we're gonna choose the latest available version, which is 14.6, and we're gonna hit okay. And it's going to ask if we want to flash, and I'm going to say yes. It's going to write the flash. There'll be a moment here where it's not responding, and you'll be nervous and wonder if it screwed up. And then it'll say, okay, it was successful. And then it's going to ask you, do you want to write the current settings to the ESC? So when you flash it, it's got the default settings, and you can copy the, the old settings over. If you want to do that, you say yes, and writes the current settings. And then it flashes each of the ESCs one at a time. So you'll repeat that process for the other three ESCs. I'm going to cancel out of that for now. And there you go. And that is how you use Clean Flight Pass-Through to flash and program your BL Heli ESCs. No more need for a programmer. No more need for a tool stick. Your flight controller is the programmer. It is the tool stick. And I got to tell you, once you get used to this feature, you will never want to be without it. The days where you have to take your top plate off and unplug your ESCs and plug them into an Arduino or a tool stick in order to do this, those days are gone. Don't buy a flight controller that doesn't support pass-through. Don't do it if you, if you fly BL Heli ESCs. Trust me, it's so great. And if you direct solder, this is a huge lifesaver because it means you can direct solder your ESCs to your flight controller and you can still program them, no problem. Hope this has been educational. Happy flying.